everyone. I'm Kat from the Littlestown Library of the Adams County Library System, and welcome to our True Crime Book Club review, um, where I tell you about uh, the nonfiction book that I read for the True Crime Book Club uh, to give you an idea of the kinds of um, stories that we read and share with one another when we meet. Um, just as a heads up, for those of you who are uh, not a fan of true crime, this review does include discussions of um, violence um, and gore. I'm going to keep it non-specific, but the subject matter may be upsetting um, for some people. So if that is not your thing, then uh, feel free to skip this video. So um, the book that I read um, during September this year in order to discuss uh, at the beginning of October um, was... Uh, called Slender Man, Online Obsession, Mental Illness, and the Violent Crime of Two Midwestern Girls by Kathleen Hale. Um, I chose this book because um, I am a fan of uh, watching people play horror games online. I generally don't play a whole lot of horror games myself, um, but uh, one of the characters that has turned up um, in various uh, indie horror games especially, has been the character of Slender Man, um, which is a very creepy, um, elongated, faceless man in um, like a black suit. And if you get too close to him, um, then all these arms come out and catch you. Um, it's a very creeper, creepy kind of like stalker kind of um, concept. Um, and uh, since I uh, was in, knew about the character, I was, and I'd heard about this story of these girls who had decided to sacrifice one of their friends to Slender Man. So when I saw that there was a book written about that, I decided that I wanted to read that for the True Crime Book Club. So, um, spoiler alert, this does um, have spoilers for the story, but here's um, a summary. Um, two 12-year-old girls um, who have both had mental and emotional problems uh, plotted and then carried out the stabbing of one of their friends and classmates in order to appease Slender Man, uh, which originally appeared as a uh, creepypasta character. Creepypasta are different um, stories that pretend to be true stories online. Um, but they're, they're not, they're fiction, but they're written as if they were real. Um, so the first um, girl, Morgan Geyser, um, she has undiagnosed early onset schizophrenia and she only had one friend, um, Peyton Bella Leutner. Um, and then uh, later develops a friendship with um, Anissa Weir, who had uh, intense depression and loneliness that manifested as bullying. And um, Anissa's uh, loneliness and, um, and uh, instability at home led her to um, dive very deeply into creepypasta stories. Um, Anissa latched onto Morgan as her only friend and introduced Morgan to the creepypasta mythos. And um, due to their kind of shared um, mental instability and... Um, sort of codependent relationship, they end up believing that Slender Man was real and was going to kill their families unless they sacrificed someone to him. And they settled on trying to kill their friend, um, Bella. And after several abortive attempts, Morgan ended up stabbing Bella 17 times um, before she and um, Anissa fled into the woods to find a slender mansion where Slender Man supposedly lived. Um, they were quickly caught um, and Bella did survive the attack, um, although she had very, very strong emotional and physical scars from the encounter. Um, both girls were tried as adults, despite being only 12 years old. And um, as a result, they were denied therapy. And in Morgan's case, um, she was denied the medication that she needed in order to control her mental illness. Um, Anissa thrived in jail. Um, after a time, uh, coming to the realization that what they did was wrong uh, relatively quick quickly once she was separated from Morgan. Um, but it took a lot longer um, for Morgan's mind to clear. Um, once she was able to get medication, um, it did start to clear up and she did start coming out of her schizophrenic delusions. 
Um, Judge Boren uh, repeatedly refused um, any clemency or consideration of the girl's mental instability or their age um, during the entire process. Um, although eventually um, Anissa was granted a petition for early release from her 25-year sentence in 2021, um, although it's very restricted. Um, Morgan is, uh, as far as I know, she is still in the Winnebago Mental Hospital serving her 40-year her sentence for the stabbing. Um, Anissa pled not guilty by reason of insanity and Morgan um, took a plea deal that required her to admit that she was guilty, but she was still given basically the conditions of um, not guilty by reason of insanity. So, but she is still in prison. Um, so my reaction to the book, um, I, I was vaguely aware of this story, um, but like so many other people, I thought that, um, Morgan and Anissa had actually succeeded in killing Bella. Um, I did not realize that Bella had actually survived, um, the attack. So that was, um, kind of a surprise to me, um, and something that the author actually brought up is that a lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions around this particular story. Um, and the book is very sympathetic to Morgan and Anissa, citing their undiagnosed mental issues, um, especially Morgan's, um, and which should have been obvious because her father, Morgan's father, had unmedicated um, schizophrenia and mental illness often has a genetic component. component. And um, Anissa's home life was um, very unstable. Um, none of the adults in their lives, um, their parents, their teachers, no one seemed to notice um, that anything was wrong, um, nor did they ever actually try reaching out to the girls. Um, which made Morgan retreat into her hallucinations and for Anissa to find solace in the creepypasta stories. Um, it made me very, very frustrated that there were so many red flags that nobody took any notice of. Um, and then once um, once they once they tried to kill Bella, um, there was sort of like a mini panic of people blaming video games and creepy pastas for what happened. When um, rather than pointing out that it was the fact that the parents and the teachers and no one in their lives seemed to notice that they were having trouble, that they were having that there were mental issues, that there was depression, that the kids needed uh, more love and attention than they were actually getting. Um, and their, their loneliness and isolation sort of fed off of one another. It, it compounded these two p kids who needed help, their issues fed off of one another until it led to their murder attempt on Bella. Um, I was also very, I was also furious at Judge, um, Bowen for not agreeing to let the girls be charged as juveniles. Um, because they were 12 years old. Um, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have been charged because they did attempt murder and they did realize that it was wrong. Um, but um, even though they were trying to do it because they thought that this character of Slenderman was going to kill their families if they didn't, but um, he refused to have them tried as juveniles. Um, he And because they were tried as adults, um, they were denied the medical and mental help that they needed, which also leads to the question of adults who have mental instabilities and mental issues are not getting the help that they need through our justice system. But anyway, it was, it was stupid and arbitrary and it really made me hate the legal system even more than I already do. Um, and even though Morgan and Anissa did do a terrible thing and they did need to be held accountable for that, they were still treated as complete monsters and not as troubled kids um, because they were not sadists. They, it wasn't like they lacked empathy. It wasn't like, um, it, it was that they were, they were troubled. They were, had mental issues and they needed help. Um, and, uh, and so it was, it seemed unduly harsh. And I think part of that is, again, the way it was presented in the book. Um, it is very sympathetic to them. Um, and it, and the girls did know 
what they were doing was wrong, um, even with the mental illness, because there were numerous starts and stops to their plans, even on the day when they actually tried to carry it out. They had a lot of hesitation. Um, and so once again, it just makes me even angrier that the adults did not do anything to address the issues that were clearly there. Um, again, especially with Morgan, her father had schizophrenia. Her mother knew that Morgan's father had schizophrenia, and yet none of them thought to get Morgan tested for early onset schizophrenia or anything like that, even though it seemed obvious that she was having hallucinations. Um, and, um, and the book, but the, the one downside of the book is that um, because it is extremely sympathetic to Morgan and Anissa and focuses a lot on their mental health, um, issues. It does not focus a lot on Peyton's side of the story. Um, Bella, uh, she used to go by Bella when she was a kid. Now she prefers Peyton, um, which is her legal name. And um, she did not get a whole lot of um, time except as how she related to Morgan and, and Anissa. And so even though I did feel sympathy for Morgan and Anissa, um, the focus of the book seemed to downplay the horror of what Peyton went through um, because mental illness aside, it was still a terrible, horrible thing that she went through. Um, and the book did not really give a whole lot of um, time or attention to her experience as a victim. Um, and, uh, but I do think that the book, um, does, uh, really, did really encourage, does really encourage readers to look at the legal system and how it treats, um, juvenile offenders, how that is handled, um, and how mental illness needs to be discussed and handled rather than ignored. Uh, fortunately today there is a far, far less stigma, um, towards mental illness than there used to be. But, um, again, this still happened, you know, in the early 2000s and, um, still there was enough, um, stigma about, around mental illness that, um, it was not addressed and these girls, um, were failed. The adults in their lives failed them. Um, and both they and Peyton paid the price for that. So, um, so, uh, in short, I, I thought that, um, Slender Man by Kathleen Hall, um, Hale was a good book. Um, it was very interesting. It was very well written, um, very narratively written. And, um, and I think that it, uh, it really does draw, um, attention to the issues surrounding mental illness and the legal system and the treatment of, um, of, uh, especially juvenile offenders. So, um, so I definitely recommend Slender Man, Online Obsession, Mental Illness, and the Violent Crime of Two Midwestern Girls by Kathleen Hale, um, which you can find um, and check out from the Adams County Library System. If you would like to join us um, at the True Crime Book Club, we meet on the first Thursday of the month at 2 o'clock p.m. at the Littlestown Library. Um, you can read any true crime nonfiction book of your choice and, um, and then bring it to the discussion table. So thank you very much and we'll see you again soon. Bye.